Hi there, and welcome back to another edition of Five Reasons That People Hate. I'm Cover Killer Nation. I hate everything, I love nothing, and secretly hope that puppies get run over by tractor trailer trucks. Okay, that last part isn't true whatsoever, but you would think it was if you read the reactions to some of the other videos in this series. A lot of people feel that these are my actual feelings toward the groups that I present, when in reality, I'm a fan of just about each and every one of them, sans maybe one or two. Really, the goal of the Five Reasons series is to go out into the music universe and discover the reason why some music fans shy away from certain groups or decide to just distance themselves completely from them, and also to examine some of the ridiculous and outlandish reasons why they do so. But, in order to satisfy those that feel that I just hate everything, we'll do one of these Five Reasons videos on one of my favorite bands of all time, and that's the band Opeth. Opeth has been a group that's been in my life for about 16 years, and I've been a really big fan of their work. And based around that, not just based around me, but based around the band themselves, they've had a fair number of detractors, and this is something that has begun even way before 2010. We'll get to that. So. Without further ado, and not to ramble on for too much longer, let's take a look at five reasons why people hate Opeth. And we, of course, begin with number five. Number five is the vocals. Now, Opeth presents a twin vocal attack that is done by one man, by Mike Ackerman. And he's able to do both a death metal side and a clean side, and he's able to also seamlessly transition between one and the other. This is something that has become a lot more common in heavy metal music these days, though it's not always been done by the same person. However, it is also something where, with those two different styles of vocals, some folks that listen or want to get into the band can't overcome one of them, and it's usually, of course, the death metal side. Uh, those that want to get into the band because their friends told them that it was a highly rated album, either that or they really loved it, but aren't a fan of death metal vocals, have usually experienced their stopping point very quickly into their experience with Opeth, considering they just can't get over it, the deathy growls, the cookie monster vocals as they've called them and have called them for years. However, these same folks are also kind enough usually to really be impressed and compliment the acoustic and the cleaner side, wishing that the band did that all the time. Just wait a little bit. Number four, the songs are too long. Now, this is something that I saw a lot more whenever I was first getting into the band and all the way up into about Ghost Reveries or so, that the songs were just too long. Most Opeth songs are able to go eight to nine minutes with ease. Some of them eclipse the 10 minute mark. Black Rose Immortal eclipses the 20 minute mark. These are very long songs that have different movements and different uh, really parts to them that give them some unique characteristics. However, to some individuals, these are just simply too long. They do not keep their attention, and believe me, that's going to couple in with number three. Number three is the fact that they're boring, so let's combine three and four for that, re uh, for that reason. Based on the, co uh, the concept of the long song and boring philosophy, what most fans feel is that the, ba uh, the songs just don't go nearly enough places in order to warrant all of that time. Basically, they're saying that there's only a, sim a couple of simple riffs that are basically repeated to death in a lot of these tracks, and what they are able to accomplish in eight or nine minutes could have easily been accomplished perhaps in three or four, had they not gone with the repetition, had they not gone with that little bit of a, you know, a hypnotic effect uh, with some of the riffs, whatever it may be. These are two reasons coupled together, usually, in order to really produce the same result of folks not getting into open, sadly. Now, this is something that has changed with some different albums of theirs, such as Damnation, where most of the songs were a little bit shorter. Either that, or in recent memory, where they've had a little bit more in the way of character to them in the eyes of some. Uh, some will also feel that there are just choice tracks that they can get into because they can justify in their own mind the length. However, it's not something that's true of each and every track. It's really confusing. It's something that doesn't make too much sense, but at the same time, still a bit respectable. Believe me, we're getting into the non-respectable stuff very, very quickly. <clears throat> Number two, Heritage and Pale Communion. Now, it's one thing to just prefer a band a certain way. That's something that's completely understandable. If you're a fan of something and they release something that doesn't really you know, fits your ear very well or doesn't feel very good, uh, then it's understandable to get a little bit upset. However, the backlash for the album's Heritage and Pale Communion, the two most recent discs by Opeth, which were a bit of a complete, you know, 180 style shift, is something that's a bit ridiculous because it's not as big of a 180 as most people expect. It's something that actually had been sort of heralded over the course of the past few albums. 
with Watershed having a lot of 70s prog moments that are laced within, and with an album such as Damnation already on their roster, and some further progression being shown on a disc such as Ghost Reveries, it only seemed like it almost seemed logical that they were going to go with this direction with Heritage and Pale Communion. However, it is a bit of a culture shift, and a lot of this has to do with certain elements of the band's music, not just the fact that they were being adventurous and trying something completely different. It's something that instead, for many people, felt like they had done a complete and total, you know, 180 and turned their backs on their fans, that they just opted to go with their own little 70s progressive wank fest as opposed to doing what the people wanted and staying with that death metal style. They loved the hard-edged, cutting lyrics and the, uh, the, the really heavy, aggressive riffing that they got. They loved the Cookie Monster growls, the, the deep death metal vocals, and all of this prog stuff that sounds a little bit too happy and a little bit too soft just really didn't fit their fancy. And this is something that has actually not caused for people not to get into the band, but has instead served as a point for people to leave the group, either that or just focus on their elder glory in their days or in their eyes, completely dismissing the last two works. Number one, though, is the fact that they aren't metal anymore. Well, that's what they say, at least. They're no longer a metal band. Now they're a 70s progressive rock band. They're not doing anything aggressive anymore. There's no more death metal. I miss the death metal. Where's the death metal? Where's the death metal? Where's the death metal? Now, once again, as I said, matter of choice, matter of preference, completely and totally understandable. But there does have to be a little bit of a line drawn between being just a wanker and actually understanding that this is what the band wants to do. For example, a one-off experiment such as Elud Divinium and Sanus easily could change over into something great whenever that follow-up, or if that follow-up ever gets released. But with it being just the one album, it's really difficult to tell whether or not it's just a one-off project, something new to try, or if it's actually a symbolism, or if it's actually symbolism toward where the band is going. With Heritage and Pale Communion, Opeth has made it pretty clear that this is where they want to be in their career, and this is the style of music that they want to play but it's something that has come at the high cost of a big-time fan backlash. Really, from the moment that Heritage was released, people started to go apeshit. They couldn't believe that this was their favorite band. They couldn't believe that this was open. Anybody that actually praised this album were immediately deemed as morons. Either that, or they were doing nothing more than playing an elaborate prank in order to try to get the band over. Either that, or to try to deceive fans into purchasing the album. Yeah, we're really all of that sinister out here in the community. It's, you know, not because we actually like the album or anything like that. And then Pale Communion came out three years later, didn't really showcase all of that different of a style. In fact, was able to build upon it even further and really dive even deeper into the progressive rockosphere of the 1970s and also carve out a unique progressive rock niche for Opeth themselves. And people were once again, actually, this was the album that got a little bit more love. Yeah. Surprisingly enough, Pale Communion was getting uh, a little bit more love from some of these fans, saying that it was a little bit more explorative, and really I think one of the biggest reasons is because it wasn't basically just, you know, five steps back, two steps across, run up, kick to the nads. Instead it was something where they had a little bit of preparation, they had a little bit of experience, they knew that this is what Opeth was all about. Plus the songwriting on Pale Communion, by comparison to Heritage, is a little bit better. But with that being said, if these guys aren't metal, if the bands that you know they're listening to don't become metal or don't stay metal, there's a great number of folks out there that want nothing to do with it. And so they walk away, they distance themselves, and that's it. That's all the more that there is. Heritage and Pale Communion are terrific albums. And yet, that's it. Well, there you have it. There's five reasons why people hate Opeth. I have a bonus, though. I have a bonus sixth reason, mainly because this one was almost impossible to ignore. Funnily enough, whenever doing research about this, I tend to peruse some of the darkest annals of the internet, which sometimes means that I end up in places that were, well, around 15 years ago that may not still be around today. The funniest thing that I saw while doing the research for this video was a discussion about Opeth and why they suck that was from a bodybuilder forum. and. The whole entire thread was based around the idea that Opeth was not a good band. However, the only argument that was seen throughout the entirety of this, uh, of this thread were basically two separate ideas. One, they suck because I can't get into them. Two, they suck. That's it. 
there was no actual explanation. Now, one could say that, hey, these guys are experts of building bodies, of pumping iron, of developing muscle. They're not people that really, you know, dig deep into the deeper complexities as to why they feel a certain way about music. And yeah, you do probably have a certain element of truth to you. But in reality, whenever you look around some of the other annals of the internet, outside of the bodybuilder market, even to the ch uh, children of Bodom message board from about, oh, nine years ago, you find about the same reasoning presented with the same minimal amount of actual, you know, explanation. It's kind of funny that one of the biggest actual reasons that people hate Opeth is just the two simple words that they think that they suck, but they have absolutely nothing to actually build upon it. Well, there you have it. I've been Cover Killer Nation. That has been me tearing out my own heart and exploring why people hate a band that I love. Uh, if you want to see an episode of Five Reasons made uh, for a certain band, uh, leave it in the comments below, and I will get it sometime in the future. I will throw it on the docket. My name is Cover Killer Nation, and I will talk to you guys next time. Take care.